Hallelujah. Man, I hope you came expectant. I hope you came ready for what God is about to do. Listen, today is going to be a life-changing uh, a service if you allow it to be, right? So this, this thing about faith, it all depends on your partnership. It all depends on your participation with God. So if you allow it to take place, if you allow it to happen, God will let that thing transform your life. The word that's going to be released on today, the wisdom and the, the worship that's going to come today has the atmosphere and the capacity to change your life. So we're going to just start start this service off right by thanking God, Father, for this day. Father, we thank you. Come on, lift up your voice in this place. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for one more time to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you for one more day to just come before you, God. We honor you, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. There is nobody like you, Father. We set this atmosphere to welcome you into this place. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are the profession of our faith. Father, we thank you, God, that we can put our total trust in you because the word declares that he who has promised is faithful. He who has promised is faithful. And we know that you're going to bring it to an expected end. You're taking us to our future. In the name of Jesus, we hollow this atmosphere to steward what you want to do. We hollow this atmosphere to welcome you in. We hollow this atmosphere to invite you in. Yes, Lord, come into this place. Yes, Lord, do your great work. Yes, Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, fall on us. God, fall on us. Let the Spirit of God reign in this place. We cast out every demonic force that tries to hinder our hearing, that tries to hinder our understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare that we receive everything the Father is pouring out. We catch everything the Father is pouring out. I decree and declare that I shall leave this place ignited and on fire. I shall leave this place ignited and on fire for the purpose that God has for me. Come on, stir up this atmosphere. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. For great shall be the sight of what you're going to do for me. Great shall be the sight of what you're going to do for me. Yes, Lord, I show up to the battlefield. Lord, and I look and see what the Lord is doing on my behalf. I show up to the battlefield and I look over all the casualties and I collect the spoils. I collect the spoils. I collect the spoils. I collect the spoils in the mighty name of Jesus. I pick up more than my capacity. I pick up more than my capacity. I pick up more than my capacity in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I shall be that that overflows. I shall be he that overflows. He that overflows. Yes, with living water. Yes, with living water. Yes, with living water. Come on, lift up your voice in this place. We're overflowing. We're overflowing. We're overflowing. I shall overflow. 2024 shall be the year of the door that I overflow. This shall be the year of the doors that are open to me. Every door open in the name of Jesus. Every door open in the name of Jesus. The year of the open door, the year of the open door, the year of the open door. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. 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 Oh, God, take us, God. Take us there to that place. Take us there, God, to that mindset. Renew our minds to receive. Renew our minds to receive. Renew our hearts to understand. Fall on us. Fall on us, Jesus. Fall on us, Jesus. Fall on us, Jesus. If you wouldn't mind, just lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Father, would you follow me today? 
Father, would you fall on me today? Would you renew my mind today? Would you renew my passion today? Would you renew my heart today? Fall on me today. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place. Have your way. Do your great work in Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, clap those hands and welcome the presence of the Lord in the room. Come on, is that the way you want to clap to welcome the presence of the King of Kings? The Lord of Lords, the great I am. Come on, come on. Can somebody reach out to two people next to you? Tell them it's time to praise. Are you ready? It's time to worship. Are you ready? Come on. We welcome everybody watching us online. Get your family together and let's get to this. Let's praise Him. Let's give Him the glory for all that He has done, for all that He's yet to do. Hallelujah. Are you ready, church? Are you ready to lift the name of Jesus? Are you ready to lift the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. I need you to dance with me today because we're about to praise God like we have never done it before. Hallelujah. Are you ready to dance, church? Come on, clap those hands. Out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Yeah, run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you, and dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace waiting where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom, there is freedom Where the spirit of the Lord is There is freedom, there is freedom Come out of the dark, just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the spirit is here, let there be freedom Let there be freedom 
Yes, you did it, Jesus. Oh, you did it, Lord. We are free to raise our hands. We are free to raise our voice. Because you did it, Lord. Because you did it, Jesus. We are free.
Church Global and welcome to Connect Church Houston for those that's in the building. Yay! Y'all, it's so good to have you. I am Pastor Janae and I say welcome, welcome, welcome. On behalf of Apostle Promise and Pastor Lily Adeyemi, we say welcome to Connect Church Global and Connect Church Houston. Can we take a moment to greet our online audience and our other churches in California, Rancho, Beaumont, and Rialto? We say welcome, welcome. Listen, comment an emoji, a fire emoji in the chat because listen, it's about to be fire, fire, fire in here today. Okay, somebody? Yay! All right, do we have any first time visitors? Y'all, I seen a few first. Can we give it up, y'all? Listen, the first time visitors, there is gonna be a QR code behind me. We just ask that you take the time. It'll take about one minute to two minutes. Fill it out, give us your information. We're not gonna spam you. We just wanna get some information from you and to you. And listen, I declare that because you came into the house on the Lord, even if you are a returning visitor, that the blessings of the Lord be upon you today. May the grace of God be extended to you. And may because of your intentionality to be in the building today, that you understand your purpose and the next thing that God has for you. Can you, can, can y'all, can y'all, and because you're clapping for them, May the same blessing be upon you. Don't be, don't, don't be hating. Don't be hating because you can get it too. All right. Now, if you have a child and you're a first time guest and you don't know, we do have our children's ministry from four to eight years old and they are able to go and get registered now to our children's ministry that is outside in the lobby or you can go upstairs if nobody is outside to get them checked in. Also, if it's zero to uh, three years old and you need to step out, we do have a cry room upstairs as well where you can still kind of view the service and also take care of the child as well. Now, if your child is in the children's ministry, we do ask that you just get your child after service in the lobby, all right? Now, service time. Somebody say service time. Service time. All right, so y'all know every week we're in the building at 12 p.m. Make sure y'all get here on time. Somebody say be on time. He's an on time God. If we trying to be like our father, huh? My God, that means we should have the same character as him. Let me preach to y'all right quick. So if my God is an on time God and he's never late, somebody say amen. Y'all not loud enough for me, say amen. All right, so just in case you may not have known, maybe you say, you know, Pastor Janae, I thought y'all started at 1210. I thought y'all started at 1215, 1230. Let's get on one accord. Somebody say one accord. Huh? Because there was fire in the Bible of in Acts when they were on one accord. So somebody say 12 o'clock. Just say 12 o'clock one more time for your neighbor who's sleeping on Instagram. Get off of Instagram, all right? 12 o'clock, we are in the building, we start, okay? You can come in the building as early as 11 o'clock if you want, 11.30 to get your seat, secure your seat. But 12 o'clock, y'all, we going for God. And don't miss prayer, because prayer changes things, all right? All right, I just had to tell y'all that, because I be here and I be like, where the people at? I be trying to greet and hug y'all and stuff, but y'all don't be here on time. So be here on time, amen, somebody? All right, somebody say Bible study. Body, Bible study, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. How many of you have came to a Bible study? <sighs> Y'all, I'll possibly be getting us right together in Bible study. I'll be like, sir, you ain't got to make me feel like I'm a beginner in the Bible, you know? I'll be like, where he found that at? Now, I done read about Job, but I ain't seen that before because I don't, when they say, yeah, he begot them and he begot, I don't be reading that. But now I'm going to start reading the names and try to pronounce them. But if you haven't come to Bible study, y'all, please make sure that you are in the building on, uh, uh, on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Y'all, we are two years old. Y'all, we are two years old. Do y'all see all that God has done in just two years? Come on, the pastors that are not even from Houston, half of the church are not even from Houston, but two years God has done an amazing thing. You can't tell me what God won't do. Come on, what he's done for others, come on, he gonna do it for us too. Yeah, that rhymed a little bit. Come on, what he's done for others, he's gonna do for us too. Two years, somebody make some noise for two years. Yeah, we are so excited, y'all. It's our two-year anniversary. I'm telling you, on March the 10th, Sunday, March the 10th, y'all, we going up, 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 okay? Everything we do is up, okay? Y'all know up from a different thing, but I'm talking about up in Jesus, amen, somebody. So on March the 10th, is the flyer. Y'all got the flyer? So if y'all have the flyer, y'all can put that up. But March the 10th is our, uh, is our two-year anniversary, Prophetic Infusion. Ain't that name powerful? Prophetic infusion, which means it's probably gonna be real prophetic -y or whatever. And y'all know Apostle be trying not to prophesy or whatever, but I would be in the building on March the 10th. Okay, tell your neighbor March the 10th. Get your phones out and put March the 10th in. Don't be like, nay, but I'm going to the beach. No, you're not. It ain't even spring break, is it? I don't know, but be in the building on March the 10th. And Easter, somebody say Easter. Y'all, I want the children to say, Happy Easter, everybody, and the ruffle socks and stuff. Y'all, Easter is in March. That is quick this year. Easter is March the 31st. Somebody say March the 31st. I need y'all in the building on Easter, okay? 
If I was y'all, I would probably get here early because it's going to be a production, okay? I'm just letting y'all know. I can't tell y'all all that's going to go on, but it's going to be lit. So March the 31st at 12 p.m. Again, if you want to get in the building early, you can come as early, maybe like 11.15, 11.30, whatever the case may be. Be in the building early. Bring your friends. Bring your cousin them who need Jesus and come. And y'all, we're going to celebrate Easter because he is risen, huh? He is not dead. He is alive. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a well and alive God. So Easter is on March the 31st. We want you to mark your calendar. Again, March the 10th is our second year anniversary for the prophetic infusion, and then we will have Easter on March the 31st. Now, that has been your announcements. I hope that you govern yourselves accordingly. Who do we have for uh, our tithe and offer? GQ? GQ, are you with me? Oh, yeah, we got the church with it. Come on, that's why y'all my dogs. Come on, Pastor. Y'all so always get with me, so, and I just love I'm that. I'm so glad that God gifted everybody so different, because I can't pull that off. If I have information to give, straight to the point. She has a lot of spice and flavor, and you know, it's like soul food, you know. Give it up for Pastor Janae. Thank you all so much. Seat time. Story time. Because we got to give you a story, right? So, you know, some people like purses. Some people like shoes. Some people like fragrance. Everybody has their thing, right? So, it's very interesting to see how, say for example, you like, who likes purses? No lie. We got one, we got one honest person in this entire room. I'm going to ask that again, second chance. Who likes purses? All right, that's more like it, okay? You'd be amazed how it's okay for you to go to the grocery store and you say, oh, them, them, them eggs is too expensive. That, and then you walk right out of the store where the eggs are too expensive and you go to Louis Vuitton and you drop three grand on a purse. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you your money follows where your heart is. We will spend money on what we care about. And there's a clear illustration for this in Exodus chapter 36. Media, if you help me, Exodus 36. Um, those names are too confusing. That's the part Pastor Janae skips over Basically, what's going on is God has asked him to build the sanctuary, right? Go to verse 2. He says, And then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. So he calls the people to do the work, okay? And then verse 3, he says, And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Okay, so, so far, here's what's going on. Every, every day they wake up, they, you know, give an offering and they do something and they, you know, donate what they got to donate. Okay, watch what happens. Go to verse 5. We're going to skip verse 4. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough. Somebody say more than enough. They bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord God commanded us to do. So basically what's going on is they're giving the offerings and the guys are saying, look, you guys are bringing more than enough. Tell somebody, that's where I want to be this year. Imagine we come to church and we say, hey, um, apostle said, no offering this Sunday. We've got more than enough. Can you imagine that? Your heart determines where your money goes. So if you really want to know where your heart is, check where your money is. So when I say, hey, it's time for seed, guess what? If it's a struggle, check your heart. Because when you love, you give. I said when you love, you do what? For God so loved the world that he did what? So I want your seed time this year to be more than what are you giving. I'm not concerned about your pocket. I'm concerned about your heart. If I fix your heart, I can fix your pocket. So I want you this morning to remember as you give, they're going to put up the new ways for us to give. Where uh, We have some updates. Please fix um, the title right there is Connect Church Global. Okay, if you're giving through Cash App, Venmo. Um, I'm sorry, Venmo is Connect Church Global. If you're giving through Cash App, it is just connect church okay so make that adjustment because I have mine saved and I just go click it so I have to fix that on my end okay and if you're doing Zelle or PayPal and my California family 
the same applies to you. We don't have two families anymore. We have one family, okay? So we've got one unit. Make sure you send it to the right place, okay? Now remember, next time you see them eggs, they're healthy, they're expensive. Buy them, but still buy your purses. Raise those offerings in your hands. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege that we have to give to you. We ask in the name of Jesus that you bless the seeds as we bring them into your house. Receive them, O oh God. As we give of ourselves first, we ask that you receive these offerings. In Jesus' name, we pray in God's people's head. Hallelujah. Come on, let's raise, let's rise up on our feet and let's begin to worship God one more time. Are you ready for the word today? I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready because I know that God has something new and something marvelous that he's going to do in our lives today. Won't you just pave that way through your worship today? Yes, Lord, we love you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
We thank you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Come on. 
We bless you all in name. We give you full permission to move in this place. Touch every boy, every girl, every man, every woman under the sound of my voice. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your holy name. Do me a favor, join your hands with somebody next to you quickly. Sweet Jesus, we ask that you move in this place. We shut down the plants of the wicked. We ask that you flex your muscles. Do what only you can do in the name that is above every name. The name Jesus the Christ. We pray that everybody say amen. Oh, you are good, you are kind, you are more than this. I'm lost for words, trying to describe you. Elohim, Elion, I'll share the wind. Your greatness is all I oh, 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 hold on, hold on. They are sleeping. Somebody's sleeping on me. Somebody's sleeping on me. Come on, somebody. Okay, maybe I need to come out there and, and look you in the face. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. That's a wrong neighbor. Look for another one. That's a wrong neighbor. Look for the one with the Holy Ghost. Ask your neighbor, say, hey, neighbor, do you have the Holy Ghost? Or do I have to look for another person? Can you help me look for another neighbor? Yell at your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have the Holy Ghost? Or do I need to look for another? Hallelujah. Yeah, you are good. You are kind, you are more than these. I'm lost for words, trying to describe you. Hello, him, hello, y'all. Ali Shelly, we. Your greatness is all I see. There is you cannot do what we are not somebody say there's no
just few hours I came to tell somebody under the sound of my voice that what you've been praying for you are about to enter into it I don't know if I do have some believers in the house do I have some believers in the house what you've been praying for what you've been seeking for what you've been trusting for you your shout will start to create are you ready make some noise hey! 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 Hold on. Hold on. this next shout is for those who know for sure that this year they will not die. Are you in the building? You know for sure you will not die this year. Open your mouth.
never stop a man that can shout. They couldn't stop Bartimaeus, the blind man. They couldn't stop him because he, he, he knows the power of shout. Are you with me, somebody? This year, don't allow anybody to shut your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. For the last time, I want you to make this shout. This shout is for this week. For those who will testify this week, this is your shout. Come on, open your mouth, shout. Covenant seeds, sit down and shout, Go, punish the devil. And as the, and the mother in law, the father in law, and all them cousins. Glory to God. Come on, I said, Glory to God. Glory to God. I said, 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 glory to God. Where you put Tamika and uh, Brittany, put them out the bag, their voice will still be loud. <laughs> Lord, help me here. <laughs> they are unstoppable, they create uncommon fire. You know, some people, when they shout, you can tell their shout is demonic. Not this one's. Don't allow anybody to stop your praise. It's your weapon. It is your weapon. Um, this chair is just... Now, take it off. Take them off right now. I don't need those chairs on the stage right now. Please take them off. Thank you. Come on, help him. He can't take four. Help him, brother. Lord, have mercy. Just take two, brother. Don't, don't mess up your back. Glory to God. After you have passed 40, be careful what you carry now. 
Lord have mercy. Your wife said, baby, you're good. You can do it. Say, uh-uh, the devil is a liar. Don't motivate me into my error. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Talk John 2. I want to show you something quickly. Everybody say wealth transfer. Say it like you know what you're saying. Mm. So third John has got only just one chapter, right? Um, we're going to read. Two. Hear this. It says what? Oh, I thought you was not in church, brother. I was about to read myself. I was like, oh, he ain't here today. Okay. The Bible reads. Uh, listen to this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health. Uh -huh. Just as your soul prospers. A another translation says, I wish that you prosper. Be in good health, even as your soul prospering. Watch this. This is not a prayer. It's a witch. Somebody's wishing for you to prosper. It's not praying for you to prosper. It's just encouraging you and saying, hey, this is my desire for you, that you prosper. But then you need to investigate what will cause me to prosper. It is that understanding that will cause you to prosper, not what the person is saying. That's good. See, I can desire for you to have a house. I can desire for you to start a company. It's my desire for you. I wish for you to prosper. But does that mean you will have the house? Talk to me now. How many stuff have you desired in your mind? Some of you say by the time I'm 20. And now you're 45. Just like me. Glory to God. But you haven't done that stuff over 20 years. <laughs> because you're always wishing for stuff. In all your gettings. The Bible says you must get understanding. There is a way of the birds in the air. There is a way of the fish in the sea. If you do not understand how to thrive, you will continue to live an ordinary life. There is a space in the realms of the spirit that you need to stay in for you to command prosperity. Are we together? Until you are able to stay in that position, you will not be able to do what God wants you to do. If you take the fish out of the water, the fish will die. Are you with me? There is a place that you must get to by understanding for you to start to command this level of prosperity. And we're not, we're not trying to, to teach you theory. We're going to be very practical. Some of the people that I'll be talking to you today, including myself, we've walked in some things that we're trying to teach you. Come on, I'm not talking to somebody. We're not telling you what we don't know. We're not trying to give you what we don't have. Oh, it's quiet in here. So I need you to pay attention. I, I wish for you to prosper. It's my desire for you to prosper. I want you to be in good health. Even as your soul prospered. That is holistic approach to the gospel. Because we have to be holistic when we are dealing with the gospel. 
Otherwise, some of you will be thinking, oh, why are we talking about the money in the church? We are supposed to just be teaching about Christ. Christ and Christ alone. Why is a preacher man speaking about money? I, I know I've heard a lot of arguments like that. Why are we talking about money? We're supposed to be leading people to Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be doing this. That's why the church people are so broke. Because the people leading the church, they don't even have understanding themselves. See, on this realm, uh, in this realm, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have money, you will serve your mates. That's facts. With the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. In fact, some unbelievers will not listen to you if you cannot show them proofs. We don't move by sight. But the people we are dealing with, they operate by what? Sight is what they can see. You can't tell me God is good and nothing good is coming out of you. You see how hypocritical that is? For you to say God is good and God can do this and God can do that and nothing is manifesting in your life. You better talk to me now. We become too religious to the extent now that we are selling a Jesus we don't even know. You sell Christ, but you don't know Christ. You don't know what Christ can do. Yes, Jesus taught about the kingdom. Most of the time, when he was here on earth. But can I bust your bubble? That the next topic that Jesus spoke about after the kingdom was money. After the kingdom was money. Why? Why is it that he taught about the kingdom first? He says, seek you first, the kingdom of God, because he's trying to lay a foundation for you. He's saying to you that I've got to lay this foundation so that you understand why you have what you have or why you should have what you should have. The reason why I'm giving you this foundation is so that you will know how to respond to money when you start to have it so that the money will not have you. Are, are you talking to me now? He's trying to tell you the reason why I'm saying to seek me first is so that money will not have you. But it's not against you having money. Do you know that it, it, it gives God pleasure when you prosper? It's the scripture. The Lord, he said he rejoices in the prosperity of his people. Which God are we selling to the people of God? When the pastor is not informed himself, he will sell a wrong gospel. Thanks be to God that I'm not one of those pastors. Glory to God. I want you to have understanding. I wish for you to prosper. I want you to prosper. But for you to prosper, you need understanding. Someone shout understanding. Shout understanding. Many people are going to God for God to give them stuff. But when you have understanding, it is God that will come to you. A man was able to have understanding of how the system works. The Bible says, and he started practicing the system. The name is Solomon. The Bible says at, at some point Solomon got to a place whereby God was the one asking question, who is this guy? And the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord went into him at night and asked him, what do you want? Most of the time we go to God and tell God what we want. But there is a realm you will get to when you have understanding that you will not be the one asking again. It is God coming to you. What do you want? want are you with me somebody if you go to somebody to ask something from them there is a proclivity that they might not even respond to you but if somebody is coming to ask you what you need it's an indication they are already ready to bless you you can come and ask me for something and I can say no I don't have it but if I am the one asking you, what do you need? How can I help you? It's an indication before I came to you, I made up my mind to help you. Somebody under the sound of my voice, 
I just want you to know by understanding that God has made up his mind to help you this year. I don't know who I'm talking to. I think I'm only talking to Abby. I'm telling you right now that God has made up his mind, ladies and gentlemen, to help you this year. But how will you access this thought? The spirit of understanding. Shout understanding. Please take your seat. In the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 34, I want to show you something. It's a new season. It's a new day. You know that, right? Fresh anointing is coming my way. The season of power, prosperity. Oh, it's a new season. It's coming to me. If I were you, I would get something to write down because the information I'm about to share with you is going to change your life if you pay attention. Acts chapter 4, verse 34. Man of God, read. The Bible reads. Hear this. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. Ah. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And they brought the proceeds of the things that they sold. Uh -huh. Read on. Next verse. And, and laid them at the apostles' feet. Uh -huh. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. Okay, stop there. Pay attention. Everybody look at me. Did you see that? Did you see that? Okay, let me ask you a very simple question. How many of you can do that? Oh. Oh. I thought you are a new generation Christian. We don't like Old Testament. The Old Testament says give 10%. The New Testament says bring everything. Is quiet in here. Oh, you said tithing is Old Testament. Isn't that what you said? Uh oh, it's quiet. See, you see, you see, when it comes to the issue of money, oh, church people, quiet. That's when they don't know anything. But I'm up in your business today. Don't worry, I'm going to help you out. <laughs> I'm up in your business. Now, the argument has always been that tithing is a what? You see them, you watch them on Facebook. They teach about stuff like this. Don't tithe because it's not new covenant. Right? Yeah. This is a New Testament church. The Bible says they brought everything to the feet of the apostles. Stop, 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 everything. everything. Come on, shout everything. everything. That's not where I'm going because I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to go sell everything and bring it to my feet. That's not where this is going, so calm down. This is not going there. I already got what I need in life. All right? Chill. All right? Let's, let's, just, let's just say that out so that you don't, your heart don't stop palpitating. Come down. All right? Nobody's asking you to go sell your house. Chill. But I'm telling you what these people did. It's in your Bible. They sold everything and they brought it. Now, the Bible says, and none of them None was broke. None was broke. Why? So when the apostles uh, told them to go sell, that was a particular family. They said, sell everything. Everybody sold and they brought the money to the apostles and said, hey, this is how much? And Ananias and Sephora, they sold their land too. And instead of them to bring the money, so they decided amongst themselves, we're going to take a portion to ourselves. And we're going to bring a portion to God. And when they came before the apostle, the apostle said to them, listen, is this everything? They said, yes, this is everything. God is not interested in the money, but he's interested in obedience. Is this everything? They said, yes, this is everything. He first asked the wife, he said, yeah, this is everything. I said, are you sure? He said, this is everything. And the Bible says, before she could finish the third time, she slumped and died. 
and they took her out. What's this? Oh, I'm in the book. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Thank you for confirming that I'm, I'm in the book. Because some people might think you're creating stories. Now, the husband coming in also, the Bible says, and then the apostle asked him, Sir, is this the Torah? He said, Yes, sir. He asked him again. He said, Yes, sir. He asked him again. He said, Yes, sir. He said, Look at this man. These were the men who took your wife out. As he was saying that, the man slumped and died on the spot. What is killing this generation is disobedient. When God said to do something, and you will have many reasons not to do it. When God is calling you to do something and you have whatever you think you should be doing, that is the reason why you are not entering into your rest. God wants you to enter into your rest but he's giving you guidelines, principles, what you are supposed to obey. Have this understanding. This is what I want you to do but you have your own ways. You don't want to do what God is doing yet. You want to get what God has to offer. God is a God of principles. And if you follow God's principles, you will become wealthy. Just following it. And these principles, they are not just for Christians. That's why you see a Muslim man becoming wealthy because they follow the principles that Christians are ignoring. We claim that we are spiritual, but we are very disobedient. We speak in tongues, but we are very disobedient. We quote scriptures that we cannot fulfill. Come on, somebody talk to me now. We, 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 we memorize scriptures all the time. The scriptures is in your head. You can quote from Genesis to Revelation. But which of the scripture are you obeying? God is not a fool. God cannot put his blessing on somebody who can give it out. Listen to me. He said to Abraham. He said, I'm getting ready to bless you. But the condition for this blessing is that you must be a blessing. See, even if you don't want to be wealthy for yourself, there are a lot of people to help. Oh, I just, for me, I don't need so much. We know you don't need so much. Thank God for your life. Oh, as long as I get, I can have $20,000 a year. I'm good. We understand. You are good with $20,000. But can you help people with that? So your motivation should never be about yourself. It should be about people that God is going to bring around you. People that God is going to connect you with. There are a lot of people that we need to help. They were able to help one another. And the Bible says, and they became what? Wealthy. And none was broke. Watch this. Pay attention to this. I want to throw something out that you need to understand. I'm not saying you should enable people who are lazy. Because some people are lazy. Do not enable them. If you enable them, they will continue to come to you. Sometimes you need to say no. Are you with me? You must set boundaries. But, but watch this. This is where I'm going. So, if you study the, the lifestyle of the Jewish people, even the Jewish people here in America, See how they create wealth. They come together to create wealth. The reason these people in the Bible became wealthy was because God took out of them those who would disobey the covenant. So everybody was on the money. Everybody was on the covenant obeying the covenant that's why everybody became what wealthy do you know that if we should divide all the wealth in the world let's say all the rich people will come together we take all the money from them right let's take the money from all the rich people and then let's divide the money equally to everybody and let's come back in the next two years though we were rich before they divide the stuff they will become richer and those who were poor most of them will still remain poor You didn't get it. Okay, let me repeat it. Let me, let me say that again. Let's divide. Let's say everybody, all the wealthy billionaires, we take all the money from them, right? We put all the money together in one place, huh? and then we divide the money to everybody on earth equally. 
and let's come back in two years time and let's come back to check what is your net worth most people that are broke right now will still be broke after they've been given a million dollars you know the problem is you can take a people out of Egypt if you don't take Egypt out of them they will remain the same Many people have left Egypt, but they brought with them Egypt. They are no longer in Egypt, yet that the mentality of Egypt is still in them. They like to be a slave. I, I'm not talking to somebody here. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whatsoever that has been limiting you, whatever that has been stopping your mind from seeing what God wants you to see, from thinking the way God wants you to think, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord delete it out of your system in Jesus' mighty name. Shout, I refuse to be broke. Let's sit down. Mentality problem. Mentality problem. Mentality problem. Mentality problem. You need to start asking yourself, how can I change the narrative? What do I need to do? There's always something to do. To change the narrative how do i change things how do i become everything that god wants me to become let me give you a few points and then we're going to break this down quickly number one if you are going to change the narrative around your finance around your life number one somebody shall build relationships build be conscious be intentional not don't, don't i'm not saying build relationship with everybody Build relationship with people who can help you. And somehow you need to submit on the people who can mentor you. Build relationships. Humble yourself. Don't be cocky around people who can help you. You're trying to teach people who are living in what you have not experienced. Oh, you missed that. I said, you, you are trying to teach people <laughs> oh, who are living in what you have never experienced. We're talking about properties. You don't have any. You have never bought one before, but you have too much experiences. Keep your mouth shut. Let us teach you. Hello? 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 We are not talking about theory here. You got too much theory. You, you, what have you done? Hello? Don't come and tell me what you have never done. Sit down and listen. Look at your neighbor and sit down. Yeah, this year stop talking too much. Sit down. Sit down. Pay attention. Sit down. Some people do know more than you do. Humble yourself. You don't know everything. Come on. Come on. Can you tell your neighbor say you don't know everything? If she's not talking to you, she's very cocky. Very arrogant. Look at him. I bought to Abba. Come and say, you don't know everything. Tell him, I ain't scared of you. You don't know everything. Come on, I ain't scared of you. You don't know everything. Look me also. The apostle say, apostle, you don't know everything. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. So when I find people who know stuff that I don't know, I humble myself. And tell them, please, teach me what you know. Power of relationship. The greatest gift that God can give any man is the gift of man. A man that does not have people. Hello? You don't have people, you'll be stranded. If you don't have people, even if you have money, you'll be miserable. You need people. Build godly and valuable relationships. And how do you build relationships? You must invest into relationships. You invest into what? You have to. You have to. You have to invest into relationships. It doesn't matter how much it will cost you. Invest into it. Sometimes your investment is time. Spending time with your mentor. Are you with me somebody? Somebody is trying to teach you what you don't know. And you don't have a gift for them. Even though when they are not charging you. You have no gift. You are going to see somebody who is going to teach you how to become something and you didn't go with a gift. 
and you think next time they will talk to you they will shut the door there is a way to get people's heart you plant into where you are trying to harvest from and until you do that the doors will be shut against you yes you can get the first appointment the second appointment you will not get why because you don't value people's time don't don't call me and waste my time my time is very valuable so if I'm going to be speaking to you, you better know what you're coming to ask me for and you better be serious about what I'm telling you. Otherwise, you will not get a second appointment. It's that simple. Value relationships. Invest into relationships. Invest into it. Invest into it. plant into that place you are trying to harvest from is important are you with me when you start to build relationships that is when these people will start to open you up to what they know because the difference between the rich and the poor is in the in information what I know <laughs> is what separated us if you don't know you will remain empty and in nobody listen to me what I know might just be what you need some of you think it's money you need to become everything you need in life but somebody knows something else so when you build relationships the next thing you need to start to build if you are creating wealth you want to create wealth number two you need to build we're going to touch on that in case some of you have questions you need to build Credit, someone say credit. Oh, somebody once said to me, somebody once said to me, ah, Apostle, I don't like credit too. Uh -uh, mm -mm, not me, no, no, no. I bought every cash. No credit, no credit. I said, what have you bought? What, what, have, you, what, what have you bought cash? Tell me. Show me what you bought cash. What is OPM? Huh? Huh? Where did we get that from, information from? Where, read your scripture, it's there. Who started this project? OPM. God. You want me to show you? Yes. When the people were living in Egypt, God said to them, go borrow. If God is saying to borrow and you are saying you don't want to borrow. <laughs> I don't understand. Which Bible are you reading? God said to his people, go borrow. Come on. Go borrow gold. As you leave, make sure you borrow not a few. Borrow big. But you know you cannot borrow big if you don't have good credit. And it's called relationships. Oh, hold on. Now, now, okay. Uh, yeah, we're going somewhere. You cannot borrow even when Elijah said to that woman, the widow, he said to her, when the woman is saying, I don't have anything. He said, no, what do you mean you don't have anything? You don't need to have anything in your house. Go to your neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Borrow jars from them. Borrow as many as you can. Are you with me? And then you start to pour into what you have borrowed. Because the blessing is always in the house. What you are looking for outside is actually in your house if you know how to leverage on what is in your house you have to leverage on the power of credit so if your credit is not good the first thing to do is not to pray you open Ecofax and open Experian and open what? TransUnion and you start kabashi. I command you change, change, change. I hear some prophets say they prophesy as they prophesy your credit score is changing. It's a lie. Cap. It's my, what do you call it? Capronian cheese. They say they prophesy. Say check your, check, check, check your credit right now. It's changing now. It's cap. Nothing is changing, I promise you. God is a God of 
principles. I'm not going to prophesy on your credit to just change overnight. No. No. There are people who can help you fix what you are praying about. Man of God, what is a miracle? A miracle is when God decides to show up in what human beings cannot do. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. So if you say Christ is changing, that's not a miracle. A human being can do that. Yeah, Wilson here can do it. You do it. In fact, do you know that on credit karma, for instance, let me give an example. On credit karma, if you go right there on TransGenial and you, and you dispute a particular whatever account that's been there, on the 24 hours to 42 hours, they will delete it out of your... Do you know that? How many of you know that? Five. Okay. Six. All right. I'm telling you. You can try it tonight. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. Your credit is checked or messed up? Okay, start there first. Hello? <laughs> start there first. Start to fix the credit before you approach people for favor. And listen, I believe Wilson will touch on that, but let me drop this to you. There is something called authorized user. How many of you know about authorized user? Okay. Um, I'm going to be testing you guys now, so be careful. If you raise your hand, you're going to talk. Because, we're, because this is a teaching class. How many, don't just raise your hand because everybody's raising their hand. I will not be left out. I know. Now, the devil is a liar. I want you to have understanding. How many of you know what authorized user is? Raise your hand. Let me see. All right, please give me give the mic to that lady over there, the one with the glasses. Yeah, I'm I'm serious. I ain't playing with you. Give, I'm I'm teaching a class here. This is a class. Give the give it to her. Yes. What what is that? My understanding is yes. If I have a credit card, uh huh, and I want to bill my husband's credit, uh huh, I make him an authorized user, but I keep my credit below eighty percent, and I make more pay, more um, amounts to my payments so okay. that it can increase. Okay. So I'm managing it so that his credit and my credit can in increase. That's good. Yeah, you, you're on the money. But let me, let, let, me, let me give you a little bit of juice to that. All right. Before you allow anybody to make you an authorized user on the account, number one, you want to see that particular account. So the fact that the person says, oh, I have $50,000 as, as credit and I can add you to it and it can help your, your credit. That's not the issue. Number one, you want to check the usage. What percentage of the money has this person used? Is this person disciplined? Are you with me? Because they sell this stuff. They sell authorized, authorized user, right? They sell it to you. But are you disciplined? Let me check all that account. Have you been paying your bills? Because if you were at 680 and you give your social security number to somebody to add you on and they are not disciplined or they miss credit, they miss their payment. Ladies and gentlemen, your 680 is dropping to 520 immediately. So much like the devil is a liar. So before you ask anybody to add you as authorized user, you need to investigate before you invest. All right? We get that? Even if you don't have any credit, that's why I'm talking about power of relationship. My son here can have 800 eight credit and I don't have anything at all. I have never bought anything at all. I have no history. This is what Jesus did for us. You have no history. You have no power to purchase anything. You go to the car dealership, they will deny you. You even go to a cell phone place, they will deny you. No credit. You are 0, 0 0.05. You're on the negative. Nothing is recorded for you. Now, it took you. Come to me. Your credit. I've seen your credit. I'm not going to tell them. Okay. It's good. Yeah. My leaders, I checked. I, I checked. <laughs> I'm on them. Because I want everybody around me to prosper. Oh, I'm intentional. I am intentional. 
I know he has an excellent credit. Beautiful. Watch this. Now, the question now is, how many years have you been building this stuff? For a long time, you've been very disciplined to make sure you are in this position. All right? Now, even though he has spent 20 years to build a credit, and I'm fresh from the boat. Just coming in, I have no credit whatsoever. And then I have relationship. Somebody shout relationship. Talk to me, shout shout relationship. And I have good relationship with him. And I know that he's got something that I need. I start to invest in my relationship with him. And then one day he might just ask me, so what's up? Hey, I don't have credit. Oh, I can help you. I can make you an authorized user. As soon as... As soon as the, he decides to add you on his credit, every benefit on his credit automatically transfers to you without you doing anything. This is what Jesus did for us. We was a nobody. And then we found him. And we started building a relationship with him. And Jesus is saying, okay, 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 I'll make you an authorized user. In my name, you cast out. Because everything I am doing right now is not on my name, it's on Mike's name. Because Mike got my back. The same way with Jesus, when you relate with Jesus and you build relationship with Jesus, Jesus is saying, even though you came to me a nobody with my name, you can become. Sit down, man of God. My God. So that is the spiritual aspect of it, but this is the natural side of it. But if you don't have relationship, you're nasty. You're terrible. You suck. People will not hurt you. Watch this, all. For those of you who are going to be hurting people as authorized users, please do not give them the card. Because most of the time, the reason they are there where they are is because they're not disciplined. Most of the time. So when they give you the card, do not give it to them. They're going to spend it. And they're going to mess you up. They send the card to you, keep the card in your house. If I cut the card, cut it off. Don't give it to them. You don't have it, they don't have it, cut it. So nobody uses it. They just need to get some juice from you to push them up. Do you get that? Come on, do you have anybody in your corner who can boost you up? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Do you have relationships with people who can help you when you are low? Some of you, you need to reinvestigate your corners. Who are these people around me? Can they even help me when I'm low? Can you boost me up? Do we even have good friendship? Do we have relationship to the extent that you can help me when I need the help? Shout authorized user. It's very powerful. So when you're building your personal credit, for those of you who've got business, you need to learn how to build your business credit also. Because for those of you who've got business, I will even say to you, please try as much as possible not to put anything on your personal name. Yeah, even, even when you want to, let's even say you want to rent an apartment. You don't have to put it on your name. Put it on the business. Put it on the business. Don't put it on your name. Protect that name. Are you with me? Yeah, we're going we're to talk about that in a minute. I'm trying to help you out here. Are we together? So when you start to build your credit and you build your business credit, you are creating uh, a system for yourself to thrive all right okay let's talk about let's talk about real estate for a minute and then you, you guys ready for me okay let's talk about real estate for a minute some shout real estate say like you mean say real estate come on say one more time say real estate do you know why it's called real estate it's because it's real yeah it's real 
Yeah. yeah, real estate because it is real. I believe very strongly there is no billionaire that you will see on earth that does not have properties. Land don't grow. So you need to get your portion before it's all taken. Someone is saying, but I'm still young. I'm only 25 years old. I don't need a property. You do need a property. When that man comes to you, the one that wants to propose to you, and is looking at what you've done <laughs> before coming, you will speak to himself. Can I match the energy with this girl? Because this girl is not playing. Before you're 30, you already have five buildings. See, this is where God wants you to get to. If I let me advise those who are not married, single people, if you want, oh, should I say this? Yes, let me say it. Uh, go, go back, yeah? Single people, you want to get married? Please, what I would say to you guys before you start to buy any property, make sure that you have conversation with a person that, I'm talking about those who are serious now. You're engaged, you've decided that you want to marry each other, all right? Now, you need to start developing your portfolio. What does that mean? So, let's say I want to marry this girl right here. We have a conversation. Listen, man. Um, we need to, to get different kind of properties. And the way we can achieve this before marriage, you have to do this before marriage. All right? You go through FHA, right? Apply for a, a complex like maybe a four unit, all right? You apply for four unit, I apply for a three unit, separate before we get married. Are you with me? So that by the time we now get married, do you know how many properties we already have? Seven. So you live in one, I live in one before marriage. And after two years, we can decide to step out of it and go buy our standalone property. You get what I'm saying? And now you have eight buildings with you in two years. That's wisdom. Those of you who want to buy properties, husband and wife, married people, my advice to you is stop putting your, your what you call it? Your, um, your plans together. You know, they will seduce you into putting both of your names on the property. Don't do it. No, don't do it. The lenders will tell you, oh, if two of you can, there are other ways you can do it without putting your names. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two of you shouldn't do it together. The danger in two of you doing it together is if everything should go south, both of you are messed up at the same time. And you can never tell what's going to happen tomorrow. Anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. You will never know. Someone loses their job or somebody has a health problem. They can't walk again and then boom, you're losing the building and both of you are messed up. You are incapacitated. You can't do anything. So if you want to buy a house, some, sometimes they tell you that, oh man, your income alone cannot qualify, right? How many of you have faced that problem before? They say your income alone. How many, you haven't faced that before? Oh, okay. Because most, oh, okay. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. First, first house I went to buy, they told me my income was not enough. I'm like, they said, for the house I want to buy, I said, your income, my first house. He said, your income was not enough. I said, oh, okay. And then I went to get understanding. I still did not do it with my wife. I got understanding. There is a way to work this thing out without both of you losing together. Are you with me? That I have to teach you privately. Glory to God. Some stuff you cannot teach publicly. So much amen to that. There's a way you can you can put your income together. You can put your income together without complicating both both of you the same time. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because now they want to see three times the amount of the property. But that's unrealistic. That's not what I need. Some of you know that you can pay for the mortgage. From what you're getting right now, you can pay for the mortgage, but they will not qualify you because they want to see three times the money. Yeah. If the house is three thousand dollars, they want to see what you nine thousand making nine thousand. How many people are making nine thousand? 
Uh huh. The percentage. How many people are making ten thousand a month? The percentage. Check the percentage. Some of you are making only five thousand dollars, and you know you can pay with your five thousand dollars. You can pay for the house, but they don't understand that. They want you to what? Make three times minimum of that amount, because that is the way they operate, and because the word has a system, there is always a loophole. I said we'll talk about that in the secret, right? $5,000 consultation fee. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm playing with y'all. Um, are you with me? Don't buy, don't, don't go and buy a house you cannot pay for. Because you are competing with your friend. So, you saw that your friend is having five, five bedrooms. And they are both working, they are engineers. They are making $25,000 a month. And you're making $5,000. And you decide, ah, I want seven-bedroom house. And after two months, they repossess the house. It's foolishness. Start where you are. Are you with me? Start where? Even if it's a two-bedroom house, just buy it. Start building equity. Buy it. Stop competing with people. Don't go and buy what you can't pay for. Some of you will go and buy cars that you can't pay for. In the name of showing off. I want people to know I'm driving Mercedes. Can you pay for Mercedes? Stay with Toyota until you are able to pay for Mercedes. Or Mr. Bush. <laughs> or Kia. Stay with Kia. My God. Stay there until God elevates you. Don't start to become who you're not. It's quiet in here. This is very important. A lot of you pray against this. Those, most especially those from Africa. They pray against this a lot. And it can make you wealthy and super wealthy. Life insurance. Somebody say life insurance. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit. I will not die. I will not die. They're trying to kill me too so that they can get the money when I'm dead. Calm down. Ain't nobody trying to kill you. It is foolish not to have a life insurance. As soon as I got to this country, man of God, that was the first thing I got. For over 12 years, I've been having life insurance and I'm still alive. She has not killed me. And she will never kill me. At least marry somebody that will not kill you. <laughs> why, why, why in the first place are you with somebody you are suspecting can kill you? I don't understand. Why did you marry the person? Why did you marry somebody you can't trust? <laughs> you can say that again. Let, let, let me, let, let's, let's, let's get the chair up. Let's get the chair up. Now, get life insurance and make sure that this life insurance, I'm not an expert in this, but make sure that the life insurance you're going to be getting has got cash value. All life. Be careful not to just enter into anything. God forbid if I die today, I know my family will not suffer and you won't have to do GoFundMe for me. I am sick and tired of Christians dying. Boom. As soon as they, they are, oh, go fund me, go fund me, go fund me. Please, we need money to bury. You, you mean you cannot even save to bury yourself? Look at your neighbor. I have to tell him, say, get life insurance. This is how these people became so wealthy. And you're wondering where did they get the money from? They put life insurance on everybody. Nobody's trying to kill you. It's a way to create wealth. And you know the funniest thing is that you can still cash out if you want while you're still alive. Oh yes, I cashed out. Glory to God. I said, before I give everybody everything, I'm going to spend this money on myself too. I said, hello, how much cash do I have there? You have some, so give me this. Give me this. I need, okay, okay, you can give me 20, give me 20. I spend it on myself while I'm alive. Someone say amen to that. 
Please, Pastor, please give your hands to Pastor Jenny. Pastor Jenny, come up quick, quick. Pastor Mike, come up quick, quick, quick. Pastor Wilson, come up quick, quick. Get your mic, guys. Get your mic, quick, quick. There's a mic with Francis. Can you take it for, okay, we got, we got all the mics? Yeah, you can sit over here. And, and you can see that, you know, these, these are some of my pastors. And, and I am very, very intentional uh, with my leadership. Because you cannot take people to where you have not been. We don't want to lead a church to where we've never been. And so I'm intentional, always challenging their minds. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, what are we doing? Okay, okay, where are you? All right, okay, so what are you starting? You know, when are you starting? You get what I'm saying? And, and, and these people, we're going to be looking at a few things that will help you, you know, navigate, you know, where you are supposed to be. All right, now let's talk about credit quick, uh, man of God. Uh, tell us what you do, actually. Uh, beyond credit, well, tell us what you do. So um, I sell medical equipment in the hospitals. I sell ultrasound. So that's what I do full time. And then um, I got into credit because I, I was in a very bad spot. So me and my brother had started a business, and uh, we were in trucking. Um, we ended up using our personal money, our personal name, to do the business. And then one of my drivers stole my truck and stripped it. it cost me $35,000 worth of damage. And so we couldn't continue anymore. So our credits were like in the 500s. It my was God. bad because we had exhausted every penny that we had trying to salvage. I don't know if you know about trucking, but the insurance cost alone on a single truck is $1,300 a month. And then the note's about $1,600. And then you spend about 6000 a month on fuel. And you still have to pay the driver. So that was the position we were in. Wow. And that's how we got into a bad credit situation. And that's how I started learning from there. Okay, so right now, guys, this session right here is for you to ask any questions. We got about 25 minutes to do this. Um, ask any question that you, uh, Pastor, please, can you position yourself? Because we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Because the truth be told, the Bible says true prosperity, this gospel shall be preached. All right? The gospel is free, but the means of getting the gospel out is very expensive. And whether we like it or not, we have a lot of people we're competing with. And they have so much money to fund their agenda. But if we Christians don't wake up, they will be selling evil to our children. It's already started. I'm telling you, it's already started. So that's why we have to be empowered financially. So um, I believe it was maybe six years ago, you know, uh, I had an encounter with somebody. My credit was bad, you know. Um, and then the person, when the creditors, when they call you, you know, um, don't, don't pick up. You know, have you heard that? Don't pick up. I know some of you, you you've been there before, right? Yes. Yes. You, you knew they are the one called, ah, I'm like, so who is that? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. You're not picking up. But that is not the way to treat these people. All right? Even, even if you know for sure that, you know, whatever they're trying to, trying to call you on is true. There are questions that you need to ask these people. How do they get your information in the first place? See, every time a, uh, what is it, a collection agency, a collection agency calls you to, to get anything from you, ladies and gentlemen, that money they're trying to collect from you has been paid for. I hope you know that. So has been paid for. Even legally, you can call the bank and tell them, can you issue me the 1099s? Monica, can you speak on that, please? So the way it works is if, say, for example, you owe $5,000 in a credit card, right, and you can't pay that $5,000, if you look on your credit report, there are three check marks you're going to see, that three of them are going to be red, or you're going to see 30, 60, 90. Sometimes they'll go to 120. Yeah. What that means is the bank says, you can't pay me my $5,000. I'm going to go tell the, the government that I loaned Wilson 5000 that he can't pay back. And so we have to write this off as bad debt. 
So that company records that as a loss. Okay, so it means that they gave you $5,000, you didn't pay $5,000, so that $5,000 is no longer a credit card debt, it is now considered to you as income. Yep. And according to the law, the credit reporting agencies cannot report your income. So that's why when you look at your credit report, you will see debt, you will never see how much you make. So once it's charged off, you cannot legally have that reporting on my credit report because it's illegal and you have to take it off. Yeah, how many of you have seen charge off on your credit before? Come on, wave your hand, you've seen it. Now, they don't have the right to keep it there because they've been paid. So you call them up and tell them to issue you the 1099 because it's an income for you. And by so doing, they need to remove it from your credit. And you can then use it and file as your, as your tax, you know, as your income. And it doesn't affect you anymore. But we don't know this, but we've been told not to pick their cause. You know, don't ever talk to them because they will implicate you. No, there are questions you need to ask them every time they call you. Because of time, we can't do that now. Come consult with him. He will tell you, or you can talk to him. I will tell you how to answer these people. And they will never call you again. In fact, you can even tell them, please do not call my number again. If you say to them not to call your number again and they call you, you can sue them. Look at your neighbor and get understanding. Any question as regards to that? Any question? Yes, that lady over there, yes. Um, hello, um, quick question. What's your name? Uh, uh, Titi. Titi, is today your first time? Yes. Can we celebrate Titi, please? Go ahead, Titi. Thank you, everyone. Um, so the question is, when, you, when you're making that phone call and you're asking for the 1099, are you calling the original um, creditor or are you calling the person who now is trying to collect the debt? Yeah, so, so before you get to the 1099, there are a few other options that you can actually explore uh, because once a 1099C is issued, you're responsible for filing that on your actual taxes. Now, what that means is if you're, say, like the tax brackets go up to 80000 and then from 80000 or from 81000 you go to a different tax bracket. If you get that 1099C, now your tax liability has increased because you're in a different income bracket. So before you get to that point, let's talk a little bit, and then I'll, I'll give you, you know, further guidance. All right, you got that? All right, so just before, before you do that, there are other steps that you can take. That's actually the finest step, you know, if they refuse, because sometimes you, you send different letters and they refuse, right? They don't want to take it out of your credit. And then that is your final. And when you go that route, it's impossible for them not to, to do that. But there are other routes in which we can, we can uh, take that out. Please talk to him after service, all right? All right, any other question? Any other questions as regards to that? Ask your question now. It's for free. <laughs> Before you start to pay 1500 Yes. Let's go quick. I know we're not shouting and praising and, and praying. To the, this is prayer right here. Amen. Information. Um, question. My name is Keisha. Um, my question is... Uh, your name is what? Keisha. Keisha. Today's your first time? It is. Can we celebrate Keisha, please? Thank you. By the way, Keisha, we invited you. We invited you. Oh, Tamika. woman of God. Come on, can we celebrate Tamika? <laughs> Titi, who invited you? Whoa, come on, celebrate Evangelist Facebook. <laughs> Titi, is that your husband? Husband, what's your name, sir? Mo? Mo? Can we celebrate Mo, please? Yes, go ahead, man. I did want to ask concerning um, when you get that removed off of your credit does not that hurt you right because of the history um it kind of takes away from your credit history right but yes but we can fix that we can fix that by having an authorized user who has that history to replace it so yes if it's if there are certain things that you look at before you go attack an account um and then before you go remove that charge off, if it's got 18 years, then let's, let's look at a few things before we make that move. But yes, you can easily fix that by adding an authorized user. It'll get you back up where you need to be. Right. I mean, Keisha, the truth be told, you're already a negative. So it's not helping you. And if it's not helping you, why keep it there? Remove it and then add authorized user and then boom, you're up again. It's that easy. All right. Okay, let's go to... 
the next, if you don't have any other question as regards to credit. Oh, okay, quick. Tasha Domino. Um, yeah, Tasha, what's up? So if you have something that's on your credit for more than seven years, but you call, you took the call and you paid it, paid them off. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. It's been there for seven years? Yeah. And then you decided to call them to pay? Well, because I paid it off, but then it'll appear again. So... So, so the mistake a lot of people make is you think you owe, therefore you have to pay. Okay, once you get to that 120 um, day mark, the only reason you're going to make a payment on that account is if you have what is called a pay for delete. Okay, what that conversation looks like is I get on the phone and I say, hey, I owe you $3,000, right? I want to offer you uh, 10 cents on a dollar. Okay, and they're going to say, we're going to take 600, we can't take 300. All right, meet me in the middle, I'll give you 400 and let's call it even. And they say, we'll take 400. You're going to ask them to say, will you send me a statement for this, for this charge? Highlighting what it is that we have spoken about. And then once I pay that $400, it is as good as I paid the 3,000. Now, what you did was your history um, is seven years from the date of your last activity. So if you were four years in and then you got a windfall and you say, well, you know, maybe I can knock out this debt and you went to go pay, now you have restarted the clock. So now you've got another seven years from the date of your last activity. So that's a, a very common mistake people make. Natasha, you got that? Yeah, it, it is important, man, you know, uh, to understand this. Very, very important you understand it. If you pay just the way you've done it, Oh, they are saying it now as a fresh one. Right, you restart the clock. And you, you, lose, the, you lose the credit you should have gotten. But I asked for a deletion letter, like saying that if I pay this, I am going to be in good standing. So send me a letter stating that it's charge off. Right, so you get the letter first before you make the payment. Oh, okay. If you make the payment without the letter, it's just here, you know, your word versus mine. Yeah. Yep, it's that easy. All right, last one on this. Yeah. Nikki. You pretty much answered it because a couple of years ago, I think it was like three to four years ago, I was like in $15,000 in debt. But what I did is exactly what she did. I went on and I went item by each person that I owed, I paid it off. But I negotiated, like you said, and then I had them to make sure that they send me a letter stating that it was removed from my credit. Now, unlike her, it didn't come back, but I didn't see the boost that I thought I was going to receive in order to buy my house. So if you have that much debt, um, before you pay anything to anybody, let's talk. If you have $15,000, um, the system allows you to get away with not paying that much back. So let's not pay $15,000. Let's talk to me first, and then I'll guide you on where to go. All right. All right. Let's move on quickly because of time. Um, we're looking into the power of passive income. You know, it's very, very important, you know, um, <clears throat> that you, you, you understand this system. Um, Janae, talk to me. About, about this, just, just break this down. You know, why is this important? Yeah, so passive income is important because at the front end, you may do minimum work or some work, but then on the back end, the, it just starts working for you. So for instance, I started with passive income about 2017. Um, I was a director at a college, um, still broke as a director position. I was working at McDonald's and Walmart part-time with a master's degree. Um, and so I realized that if I wasn't doing sports, I was working six to 12, but I still wasn't bringing the money home on my side job that I needed every two weeks. Um, so what I did is I prayed and God gave me that wisdom to use the skills and the expertise that I already had, which was graphic design, website design, doing journals and planners. And so I offered that to churches. I offered it to my women's group. And since 2017, I've made over 16K with digital products and passive income. So what does that look like? So let's just say that active income is your working, right? So um, I work a full-time job, corporate, you know, doing HR leadership and um, really coaching and facilitating leaders and emerging leaders. But am I, I have a publishing company, which is active, which means I actually have to publish your book. I have to do the work. But 
passive income is I write a book to tell you how to publish your own book, right? If I'm a photographer, he's doing photography right now, but the way to his passive income is he can sell me stock photos online that I can use for myself, right? If somebody is doing debt collection and I don't know how to reach out to the debt, you can do it for me or you can create passive income by simply giving me the templates myself. I buy it from you. That way I can copy and paste it and send it to the creditors. So passive income works for you. I, I started a business what's digital products on Sunday, just digital products alone, and I've made four figures as of yesterday. And that is on, and, and I, I showed it to Pastor Mike and Apostle, that is on 30, I sold a $37 ebook and a $47 ebook. And I've made four figures since Sunday. Peep, I created it once. How many of you have heard of Canva? How many of you have heard of Canva or Fiverr? Keep your hands up. How many of you have created something on Canva or used Fiverr to create you a product to sell online? Put your hands down if you haven't. You see that? So all of you know how to use Canva or you know about Canva. You know about Fiverr. Somebody can create a planner, a journal, an ebook, a one thing. You can put it on a site, put it in a Google Doc, send it to people, and you can start selling that. Right? So like if I was Aisha, Aisha owns the food truck. People probably want to know how to sell food trucks, but Aisha's having to work every day. Aisha's passive income is an online course, or she can do an ebook on how to start a food truck in the state of Texas. She, she creates it one time, and people start buying it over and over. There are times I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and there is money in my account or money on my website. I haven't made a post at 3 a.m. So if you're not doing passive income and you are looking for a side job, especially as moms, as somebody who went through IVF, you can write a book about how you went through IVF and what the steps are. Um, I was just telling somebody, listen, if I am from another country and I don't know how to go through the process, how do I get over here? I'm, you can create a checklist for that to help people because what you're doing is you're going to Google, you're going to YouTube, you're going to TikTok for all of this information. And what passive income does, if somebody creates something to give you the information that it took them years to do. Right? So if you're not doing passive income, you definitely should do it. All right? So if, does anybody have any questions? Let's just say you do something right now corporately or you have a skill or expertise and you don't, and you need an idea. Anybody have that? And let me give you my framework before you ask. I start with success. I start with knowledge and I start with passion. So what is something that you have success and results in? So I've ran a 5k, I've made money online and I have, let's just say I public speak. I've ran a 5K by the grace of God. I cannot teach you that, okay? I don't know how I did that. So I'm not gonna use that. I don't have the skills to teach you how to use, how to run a 5K. I do, however, have the skills to teach you how to make money online and how to conquer the fear of public speaking. So now I'm taking the 5K out. Now I have two choices. I can teach you how to public speak or I can teach you how to make money. Which one of those do I have a passion for more? Making money online. So that is the one that I'm going. So think about where do I have results? With those results, where do I have the skills and the knowledge to teach somebody? And then where do I also have the passion for it? And that's where you can start with your idea. Does that make sense? All that, right? That is so good. That is so good. You know, um, there is something that I, I want to challenge quick. Uh, because I, I hear this thing about passion, right? Mm -hmm. A lot. And we have to be careful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because in marketing, it's, it's imperative that you understand that whatever you're trying to sell to the people, that people truly need it. Yes, yeah. Because you can have passion for what people don't like yep. and what people don't need. Mm -hmm. So before you start putting your money into your passion, you need to investigate. Yes. Come on, look at your neighbor and say investigate. Investigate. Come on, you, you're sleeping on me now. Say investigate. Yeah. Investigate. Oh yeah, but I love it. But like, it's, like, it's like you, <laughs> Pastor Lily, producing the music, right? And then after producing the music, she's feeling herself. My yeah. God, I love this song. I love this song. And then we are, we are, we are in, the, in the room with her, mm -hmm. five of us. And we're saying, girl, this, girl, this song is good, but uh, I think this one is more commercial. Yeah. And she's stubborn. No, I'm feeling this. This is what I'm feeling. You are not selling it to yourself. Right. We are five people in the room that you are supposed to sell to. And we're telling you we don't like this. We want this. And you are stubborn. Telling us, but this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. That's what happens to a lot of people with passion. I have passion for this, but it's not marketable. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So whatever that you're having passion for that's not marketable, kill it. Yeah. Create another passion. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your neighbor say, kill it. Kill it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. I think what we need to do, uh, Pastor Jene, from your angle, right? We need to, to create a class where people can come and you can truly teach yeah. on how 
to make money online. Because listen to me, if you cannot create something that you can make money off when you're sleeping, you're not doing anything. Now, now looking forward, 10 years, 5 years t- t- from now, everything is going to practically be online. Yeah. So make sure whatever you are creating or you're trying to sell, you can do it while sleeping. Do it online. Make it, put it online. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. That's very, very important. Let's get it. I'm go quickly. Talk to me about why is management important, budgeting and all that stuff. Quickly. Yeah, so, um, man, it's a, it's a large topic when you can talk about wealth management, right? Um, I think a lot of people find ways to make money, but then you find it just running away from you. And so, um, before you have to go see Pastor Wilson to correct the credit issues that you have, you have to change your mindset, right? So uh, when we talk about managing finances, wealth management, right, I I take a lot of people through um, basically just the fact of how much am I making? What are my monthly residual expenses? And every time I take people through this, it's so funny how they're like, oh, you want to see everything? Like, yeah, I want to see how many times you go to in and out how many times you go to Whataburger. I want to see every line item because we're going to then average out a couple of months to see how much do you actually eat out. My God. Because most people don't realize that the biggest area that they're losing their money is from what they're putting in their mouth. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. Food. Oh, your food is... <laughs> Repent now for the kingdom of God is at hand. Your food is taking your money up. Talk to me, man of God. It's true. So, so once, once you go through that, right, so you, if, if it's a household of two, right, your um, husband, wife, right, at the top, just, just imagine you having like a Word document or an Excel file. At the top, you're going to put in my income, my spouse's income. The next section is going to be all the residual expenses, so your rent. You know, how much you spend on groceries on average, how much you eat out on average, the utility bill. And I'm talking about literally go through, like, print out three months, four months worth of bank statements and go line by line. Identify what's recurring. Every month I have to pay this. Like, I got to pay it. So that's, that's a given, right? After that, you're going to see what your total expenses are. And then you're going to subtract the income from those expenses. That's going to give you what is your disposable income. Disposable income is the money that you truly have to move and shake with, right? So from that amount of money, now you're going to say, how much of it can I save, right? Because you should always pay yourself first before you do anything else with this income. So how much can I save? And then... How much do I need to use for other things, right? So am I planning for a vacation? Am I, do I want to start a fund for Christmas for my, for my, uh, my loved ones? So I'm, I'm not at the end of the year scrambling, and now I'm just actually not within the budget. I'm just spending because I want everybody to know that they're loved. So then you don't have a budget. You just spend, right? Wow. Now, when you have that and, and you start to develop those habits of saving, now you can start looking at things like, real estate purchase. Now you can start looking at ways to create other streams of income for yourself because that disposable income can now even be leveraged by a bank to tell you how many, how much loan money you can qualify for. So it's, I'm not, I'm not of the, um, of the company of like just having a bunch of money, like making one time big pots of money. My, my thing is how much can I grow my disposable income on the month, right? If I'm at 2000 a month disposable income, can I get that to 10000 Because if I can get that to 10000 then the banks will actually give me almost 15 times that amount of money for a loan. So I can go then buy a business, I can go own a, a McDonald's, whatever I want to do, because I can use it as uh, leverage for OPM. That is so good. Um, I, I think we need to, so one day, true story, right? I just went through my subscriptions, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, I, I believe it was the Holy Ghost. Because I don't do stuff like I don't go back and be checking stuff. Oh. And then I, it just, just check it. Yeah. Man of God, I have over $300 yeah. going out of my pocket for th- stuff I don't use. Yeah. Have you been there that you just bought stuff because you needed it at a time, right? And you forgot to cancel. 
talk to me now. Yeah, you forgot to cancel it, right? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you realize that you've been paying for how many years? Wasted money. And just wasted money. Today, when you get to the house, yeah. make sure you go to those, those subscriptions and check it. What, what am I using? I don't use cancel it. You can save yourself $100, $200. Maybe some of you are like me, $300. It's very, very important that you do that. All right? So that at least you, you, can, you can save on some stuff. You know, and there are different ways that you can easily just make money. I was talking to my Baba yesterday and I said, who is the owner of this, of this shop? He said, the owner is not here. I said, does he come here? He said, no, he doesn't come. I said, he just get his money. I said, is he a Baba? He said, no, he's not a Baba. I'm like, oh, yeah. he doesn't know anything about Baba. No, we don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. So you can easily make $10,000. From renting a place and get your equipment there, right? Spend maybe about $50,000 to, to make the place ready. Get about $50,000 to make this place ready. And then you can, you can make that money back in five months. Yeah. Of course, it's not just going to be automatic because you need at least about 10 people. Yeah. You need about, at least about 10 support for, for barbers to, to be doing the operation. You charge them for, what do they call it? The booth. The booth, yeah. You, you charge them for that, you know. Um, and you can make... That's your passive income. You don't have to leave, leave your job to be able to do that. And you can partner with somebody. Let's say you don't have $50,000. Maybe about two or three people, all right? Okay, you want to you wanna partner with me? Make sure you partner with somebody, not just a Christian, not somebody who speaks in tongues. Check their character out first. Because there are a lot of crazy Christians, all right? They speak in tongues, but they're crazy. They're not disciplined with money. They will mess your business up. Check them up in the spirit. Because some are operating under a spell. It don't matter how much you invest in them, you'll lose all the money. Yeah. So be, please be careful. Uh, don't say, Apostle said we should partner together. Don't partner with, us with everybody. You have to investigate before you invest. Yeah, so you can partner with the right people and say, okay, I got 15,000. You got 15,000. I got 15,000. Let three of us get this place. Let's make this place work for us. You know? And then three of us can share $4,000 or three five every month passive income without doing anything, without you lifting a finger. So there are different ways in which you can make money, just find a way to do it. In fact, how many of you have AI on your phone installed? ChatGPT. How many of you? I don't know why the rest of you don't have it. <laughs> you should have it. Alright, because there's a lot of stuff that your, your brain will not think about. That all you just need to do is to put it right there. How to start a course, just put it right there. It's going to break everything down for you. Yeah. It will teach you on how to do everything. Why are we not taking advantage of it? Somebody once said to me, that's, that's Antichrist. Antichrist, Antichrist. I'm like, shut your mouth up. <laughs> it's not Antichrist. <laughs> the, the, the life is evolving every day. Take advantage of every moment. Are you with me? Does anybody have any question for him? Question for him? Yes, one question. And question for her, anybody? One, two, three. And I stop at three in Jesus' name. One, two, three. The first person is right here. Yes, second. Yeah. And then, and then the last person at the back. I just wanted to ask, um, what is the AI like? Is there a certain app that you can get for the artificial intelligence? Yeah, chat. It's chat GBT. Chat GPT. Uh huh. Dot com. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. you can ask that stuff anything. I promise you anything. Yeah. You. Space. Use your mic. When you're using Chat GPT, the best thing to do is be specific. So let's just say that you are trying to write a budgeting book. You know, you can say, you know, I am a um, a budgeter, a Christian. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm trying to speak to other believers to help them on, you know, budgeting. Can you add godly scriptures but can you also give me the tools on how to tell them how to budget from a to z so the more specific you are and you can say and write like me my tone is urban blah 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 blah. the more specific you are to chat gpt is the better i would say do not take everything from there take it as a guide and then change it up into your own words because you don't just want to copy and paste also uh from what i the last time i researched chat, chat gpt only goes back to 2021 so there may be some things outdated. So just kind of be, be mindful of that when it comes to statistics and stuff like that. Good job. Uh, I'll just add to that. So also you can do anything with it. I even made like a lease agreement with ChatGPT. So just tell it what it is that you're trying to do, especially if it's a document. 
it'll just make it for you, but you have to be specific. Yeah, you don't have to crack your brain about it. In seconds, the job is done. All right? Glory to God. Yes, next question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, it's not a question, just a comment. Um, I am also a first time on Facebook invited me. My name is Camila. Camila, come on, yes. let's celebrate Camila. Uh, I would I would just like to say that this is probably the most fantastic service. Wow. Wow. Um I have never seen this. Like what wow. you are doing right now. I'm just like flabbergasted because you finished preaching the word, but you're teaching us how to fish. Wow. And this is, I, I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. Because the you, Bible Carmella. says if you, if you give a man a fish, he can eat for a day. But if you teach him to fish, he would be able to eat for a lifetime. And to stop a service to discuss credit and passive income and management I am just like oh my goodness sir in the burgundy suit I'm gonna need a card please <laughs> that is my so that's my question I'm gonna need your card please directly at the service but I just wanted to say that this was absolutely magnificent and young people in here young people that don't know about credit and debt and if you're not in college yet don't let them get you with them credit cards yeah, listen to everything that they have said because this is absolutely amazing. I'm not a member, but if y'all do this and you have a workshop, I, please invite me. I want to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate that coming. Yeah, the next person is at the back right there. Uh oh, now the lady over there. I didn't even see that person. We're going to go back to that person, but let's take the lady over there. Raise your hand, please, ma'am. Yes. My name is Carla. Hi. Hi, Carla. Um, so, back to the publishing and the book. Um, would I have to um, get a publisher, or could I just go make my book and. The publisher. This yeah. is a publisher right yeah. here. Yeah. So, I, so I do own a publishing company, a full service publishing company for those who maybe want to do self-publishing, but you don't want to do the work. So they edit in the book cover, all of that. However, comma, you can do publishing on your own, right? So you can do publishing on Amazon KDP. So you can look that up, um, kdp.amazon.com, right? Um, however, you do want somebody who has that knowledge because it will get rejected every time if you don't know the dimensions, if you don't know kind of how to set that up, but you are able to do that on your own. Just make sure you have a book cover, um, make sure you have your manuscript. I do suggest editing that um, and also making sure that you have an actual graphic designer for your book cover because people actually review the book cover first before they even try to read the book. Um, but you can do it on your own or you can make it an ebook, which is going to be either one of those will be your passive income because you are going to write it once and then you're going to sell it either online on KDP and they'll mail it out for, for you from Amazon or you can put it on a website or something as an ebook as well. So you That's can get good. people both. That's good. What's just strange to say to you, let me summarize, is that you can do it by yourself, but if you're going to go through her, you have to pay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus' name. Uh, yeah, amen. <laughs> because the truth be told, the people don't truly value what they don't pay for. Christians, Christians, they don't mind to pay $1,200 to watch Beyonce. That will not give them no value. They go there and dance their whatever stuff off. And then they come to church. You ask them to pay for stuff that will bring value to them. They start complaining. Hypocrisy. You know, if, if we're going to have value to you, then you should be responsible enough to value our time also. It's very important. Because if you invest into it, you'll be serious about it. Yeah, you'll be serious about it. All right, let's, let's get that brother quick. Hi, my name is Lola. Hi, um, Lola. I'm fine. Um, I walk towards height. If you, if you are very familiar with Houston, you know height. Now, where we come from, me and Pastor, where we go from, we have two sections in Nigeria. It's Lagos, and in Lagos, there are two places, Victoria Island or Ikoyi. Right here in Houston, they have three. They have downtown, midtown, and height. For we, middle class, none of us is there. I keep telling people, like last week, Mickey 
I had a function in, his, in our office. There was this guy, he's into barbecue. When Nikki saw what he was doing, he called me up. He said, look, you're good. Why don't you go into African restaurant? I'm not an American to eat. But on the height, nothing like black American, nothing like African restaurant there. So I took my time. I called a friend. I told a friend, look at what is going on. Just like you said, each, uh, each of your advice is what is happening in our life over there. We have to invest. Invest with focus, commitment, and integrity. If you have those things, we don't need to, we, can, we all can open a salon here. We all can open the barbecue here. The money is the money's right on the height. When you go to height, we have five different continents on the height. Asia, Europeans, and Spanish. Those are the people living on height. And I'll tell you, a friend just opened an Abba, an Abba, an Abba cream tea cafe last two weeks. When the friend told me what he made on height, I couldn't imagine. I saw it. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 is, it is important beyond partnership. I think we need to speak to our minds. The way, can I, can I say the way I feel it? Let me go down. Stay there, guys. What is wrong with black community? Hello? I, I don't understand what's wrong with us. When, can, can, I, can, I, can I be real? When a black man starts to make money, what is the first thing they're thinking of buying? Cars. <laughs> or juries. You want to flex. You spend all your money buying Cars that, you know, after one year, you can't even pay for. And you put juries, big ones on your, on your neck. And... <laughs> what is the problem with us? Why is it so difficult for us to think about big stuff? Why? Are you trying to say something, Titi? You're just agreeing. Tell me why. Please, can you give up my... Hold on, hold on, Titi. I don't, I don't understand. My huh? husband is probably rolling his eyes, but I'm going to say this. As an African-American woman who's married to a Nigerian man... Talk to me. Um, it is very easy for people who are not from America to come into America and see opportunities that Americans do not see. What, what Africans see, what Asians see, what Europeans see that we do not see is exposure. When, a, when, a ah. African comes, when an African comes and, and goes to go get a six-week course yeah. and starts making six figures in eight weeks, he turns to his brother and says that. Lil, Lil John in the hood does not have anybody who was exposed to that opportunity. Talk to me. So it's not that we do not... So it's not that we don't want the opportunity, but if, if I don't have the exposure, I can be brilliant. Yes. But if I do not have the exposure to the opportunity, I will not have the opportunity. Yes. My God. So yes, a part, I, I do want to say there is truth that there is, um, that there is displaced um, um, of priorities, of, of priorities yes. right? Yes, when we get money, we spend it, but that is because we don't see it. When people come from Nigeria, well, I can only speak for talk to I, us, talk what to I'm exposed to. It's okay, to. it's okay. When I see people, um, our community come from Nigeria, um, they come with a different kind of struggle and a different kind of hunger, which makes them see the, the opportunities that we cannot see. So all I'm saying is, before we say this blanket statement, yes, there is some truth to your statement, but understand as an African-American that is in this culture, and I see, what, I see both worlds. So, so watch this. So, so check my language. I said, what is wrong with black people? Oh. So, so I ain't talking about African-American alone. Black people. So this is not the issue of whether you are African-American or you are from Nigeria or you are from, from whatever, Zimbabwe or whatever. Black people in general. Let me tell you something. I'm from Nigeria. I know what's up over there. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. People are in poverty. It's not every Nigerian, the, every Nigerian that, that knows what to do. There is a mentality problem that is going on amongst the black people. I get it. That some of us, the reason why we're where we are is because of trauma. Come on. 
You know, we, the, the, there's so much that history that went through and we are not exposed to certain things. There is no exposure. You ask ordinary, okay, I told you the other day, two, maybe two weeks ago, that you guys understand the power of blue passport. How many of you remember that? Yeah, do you remember that? Now, and back to what you're saying, exposure. There is no exposure, there is no um, understanding. Because if there is understanding, we will do things differently. If there is understanding, we will see differently. When there is understanding, we will partner differently. But when there is no understanding, we will continue to repeat history. What our parents failed in, the same thing, we go back to it, we start to do it. We can't see possibilities. It's time for us to wake up. Stop investing in liabilities. Come on, that's my point to you. Stop investing in what? No, stop investing. Get yourself properties. It's a cry for me, personally. The struggle that we are going through, we can change this. If we can be intentional. Stop locking yourself down to what happened. What, 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 what happened five years, 20 years, 50 years, on, and you are locked down to that. It's time to move on. Start seeing, move with people who are going or, 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 or who have been to where you are trying to go. Right. Remember I spoke about valuable relationships. Look for people who can help you get to where you are going. There are some friendships that you need to get yourself away from. It's been 20 years, it's not helping you, it's taking from you all the, all the time. Look for people who can help you get to where you are going. Identify them. Why, why did I bring these people up here? Because there's something they know that most of you don't even know. And you can, you can benefit from them. Learn, humble yourself and learn from people. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? I was, I was born in Lagos. But we was broke. Like extremely broke. That the broke would look at us and ask, man, what happened to you? That's the kind of broke. So when you talk about, oh, you, you, you are in the hood, you don't even understand. The real hood, go to Nigeria, you see the hood. I was born in that kind of stuff. And for me to come out from that and become what I am today, come on, somebody, you better talk to me now. There was, that, that was a shift in my mind at some point. It's not just prayer. We've been taught to pray, everything will change. That's a lie. How long have you been praying? And it's not. Don't get me there. All right, y'all come down. Come down. Let's go. Come on, let me celebrate them. Come on. Celebrate these great people. Write the seven things down quick as we close. Write the seven things down quick. How many of you have your own business? Wow. Now put your hands down. Let me ask a question. How many of you have your own business? What? I love it. Okay, put your hands down. How many of you are fully registered? Okay, so let's help people who don't know what to do. So if you're going to start a business, I expect every one of you to start a business. Yes, man? I'm, I'm, I'm with the government. Yeah, because many people are doing, they are doing business, but they're not registered. And you can't have no benefit whatsoever. Nobody's going to listen to you without what I'm about to give you. All right, number one, first, before you start any business, please make sure that the idea that you have is marketable. And it's what people need. Write it down, please. I beg of you in the name of Jesus. Write this down. Business idea. Investigate the idea and make sure that it is what people want. Number two. I'm running through this because of time. Number two. Have a business plan. Have a business plan. And your business plan is your goals, your strategies, and your projections. And your business plan is what? Your goals, strategies, and your what? All right, don't just say, Oh, I'm gonna start a business and that shout it, but you don't have no goals. What are you trying to achieve? What is the projection? What are the strategies that you're going to implement? Is that is that okay? Number three, now you need to then look for structure. Now, structure means that to register with the state in which you want to operate in. All right, the state in which you want to operate in. Uh, and if we want to go even deeper. You know, for, for those of you who want to register LLC and other kind of stuff, I would advise that you, 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 you register in states in which they cannot touch your assets. 
that's a deeper level of conversation all right all right if you want to know that i'm gonna tell you where to register if that's the route you want to go because you don't want, you want to make sure that you secure your pro your property and your business in the case somebody want to sue you now that's why in fact can i say to you guys how many of you know about living trust all right even those of you who have your house right now consider putting it in a living trust remove it from your name yeah if you go to them and say yes because if anything should happen to you they will take your property from you but if you put your house in a living trust when you call the bank and say hey, i want to put it in a living trust you wonder what they're going to tell you they say oh your balance is going to be due immediately that's a lie they're just trying to threaten you there is a law that governs everything that we do here in america they cannot bring the balance to for you to pay up right now so you must know what you're saying and how you're saying it to them put it in a living trust in another words make yourself the one who controls everything but holds nothing So in another words, so even if they want to come for you, they won't see nothing. That's why you can put some people's name online and you're looking for property they own, then you can't see nothing because it's not on their name. And you think they don't own nothing. They're tripping there. They, they own a lot of stuff, but they put it. There's a way you can secure your family even when you're gone. Because when you're gone, if there's something going on, they can take your property away from you and your family is left with nothing. But if it's in, in a living trust, they can't touch it. Somebody say, can't touch this. All right. So structure it well. So ask yourself, what kind of business you want to have? So do you want to go LLC, uh, uh, SCOM, whatever stuff? You know, you need to know what is good for the kind of business you're trying to do. Because of time, I can't go into all of that. You want more information, talk to me later. All right. Number, th number four, make sure that you, the, the name before you register the name, right? Make sure that you search for that name that you're about to use. Search for it online. Make sure that the name is available. And if you see that the name is available just before you register with the Secretary of State, also check with Secretary of State to check to make sure that their name is also available. And when you are sure that the name is available, do me a favor. Go and get the domain name quickly and buy everything. Dot com, dot org, uh, online, on buy everything so that nobody else can use it. You get what I'm saying? All right. Next one. Then go register the business. Register the business with Secretary of State. Next one, time of oh man. Um, get your EIA number. Get your EIA number. If I, for some of you guys who want to get to another dimension, I would say to you, brand yourself as the, make yourself the brand. What does that mean? If I were you, I would get an LLC on my name, on your name. Get it on your name and brand yourself. A time is going to come that what I'm telling you now will make sense to you. Get an LLC on your own personal name and get your EI number on your own personal name. You might need it one day. We can't go into details of that all right now. Next one, make sure you have a bank account. Have a bank account. Make sure that that bank account, even if it doesn't have anything, at least put $250 there, all right? Let it stay there. There's a reason for that. I can talk to you about that later. You pay me $10,000. I'm going to coach you on that one. Glory to God. <laughs> And then, last part of it, before you start to launch your business, what is the marketing strategy before you launch? Get a marketing strategy before you launch. When you get a marketing strategy, and then you can launch your business. Did you get it? What was the first one? Number two. Number three. Number four, uh huh. Get domain name, yeah, with your website, uh huh. Next one, register the business with Secretary of State, uh huh. Get your EIN number, uh huh. Get a bank account, put at least $250 there, uh huh. And market a strategy for your business, all right. We love Jesus, we love God. If we do not market the church, nobody will know we're here. T.T. said it saw it on Facebook. Why? Because we put it there. She wouldn't see it if we didn't put it there. She saw it online. She wouldn't see it if we didn't put it there. So what you want people to see, you have to go to them. You take it to them. Jesus can be in town. If nobody knows that Jesus is here, nothing will happen. Jesus of Nazareth. He was with a woman, talking to a woman. Until the woman went to the city and started telling everybody, Ooh, I have found somebody. 
He told me everything I needed to know. Everybody said, who, who is that man? And they went, he was there before the woman spoke. Then nobody went to him until the woman spoke. So there's need for you, even with the Holy Ghost, to mark it. How many of you in this room right now saw us online? That, and that's how you joined the church. Raise your hand. That's how you, you saw us online. That's how you came into the building. Look at, look at all the people. So that's why it's very important that you market yourself. And then last one I'm going to give you before I go. Make yourself the brand. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? Make yourself. Make for yourself, I beg your pardon, a good name. The Bible says a good name is better than what? Oh, you don't know that, huh? A good name is better than what? Silver and gold. The Bible says, for God has highly elevated and given him a name that's above every other name. Make sure that you build your name. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed today? I'm, I'm telling you, there is no prophecy I would have given today that would be greater than the information we gave you today. Because many people have prophecies hanging over them that they have no information. What is the use of me prophesying on you and you have no information? Please stand to your feet. Just one prayer and then we'll be out of here. Those of you who are coming for the, who came in here for the first time, please, we'll have a gift for you guys. Immediately after the service, please, can you be on this left side of the, of the building? Those of you for the first time, you came here for the first time, please be on this side of the building. Uh, is there any other person today is your first time, apart from the people who are already seen? Today is your first time, you've never been here, I want to love on you quickly. Any other person, apart from the people we've seen? Man, I love the people that came here for the first time today. They are very vocal. I love them. Come on, can we celebrate them? They are the ones speaking. They are very vocal. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Not that I don't like quiet people. You know, I talk a lot. Uh, I want people who can talk to. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I want you to pray. Say, Lord, give me understanding. Say it like you mean. Say, Lord, give me understanding. I said, Johnny, this week. I declare the spirit of understanding possess me now in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Pray it out, pray it out, pray it out. Mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. For any reason you are yet to accept the life which is in Christ Jesus, I want to give you an, uh, just the opportunity for you to accept this life. I'm telling you, there is nothing more than being with Jesus. I'm telling you, a life with Jesus, I'm telling you, is going to continue to be sweeter by the day. If you are yet to accept the life of Christ, whether you're watching online or you're in the building, you can just wave your hand. You want to accept the life which is in Christ Jesus. We want to pray for you and we want to welcome you into the kingdom. Anybody, anybody like that in the building? You're yet to accept. You've been practicing religion, but you want to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Or whether you are in, on, online, um, let us know. If you are online, we have a pastor there online who can lead you. For the rest of you who are in the video, I want to believe you are saved. Come on, celebrate yourself one more time. Celebrate yourself. Those of you who are coming for the first today is your very first time. Please meet us on the left side of town here. We would like to give you a gift and just tell you just briefly, just about two minutes to talk to you. Uh, we meet every Wednesday for Bible study. Uh, my God, last week Wednesday was very corrosive, my God. I encourage you to be here Wednesday by 7 o'clock. All right. Next week, I'm going to be telling you some of the things that God is revealing to me. Dave, we're going to tell them what we discussed the other day next week. All right. It's going to blow your mind. All right. So please be here next week, Sunday. Every Sunday with me by 12. It's 12 to 2 uh, 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 on a normal day. Glory to God. <laughs>
on a normal day. Glory to God. But Saturday on, on Wednesdays, we meet 7 o'clock. We're looking forward to seeing you. Put your right hand above your head. Come on, shout out. I've got favor on my head. Stretch forth your hands and make your decree. I've got increase in my hands. Come on, what will God do with your feet? Speed on my feet. God bless your family. See you on Wednesday.